Hello, welcome back to Teens on Topic. I'm your host, Emma Arnson, and today I'm joined by Sarah and Issa. And today we have a topic that is unfortunately in the news quite a bit and is pretty controversial all across America. And so let's see what the adults in Davis have to say about it. Uh, so our question this week is, do you believe the federal government should regulate guns? Oh, yeah, totally. Uh, well, because, like, all the shootings that are happening everywhere, and especially, like, in our schools, like, I don't want to have, if I have ever had kids, I don't want them to, like, feel afraid to just, like, go outside or, like, I don't know, for my state, safety, too, like, I don't know. It's, it's like, no one's trying to take guns away. We're just trying to make it like, you know, regulated. Yeah. You know, I think that people, when they hear gun regulation, they're like, oh my gosh, I'm not allowed to own a gun at all. I like, know, just, you know, we want to make it safer. Or, I mean, not, like, the way, like, not everyone can just get a driver's license, like, you have to go through steps. Mm -hmm. I don't really know a lot about, like, gun control or any of that, but I think there has to be some degree of, like, regulation. You know? Yeah, I agree with her. I don't, I'm not, I don't know a lot. I know people who own guns and stuff, yeah. but... I feel like they, like, I feel like you should be like a further background check and stuff before you actually get a gun. Yeah. There should be more regulations, higher standards than getting guns, I feel like, but I'm not really sure in how everything works out and everything. Yeah. Alright, go. Uh, so our question this week is, do you believe the federal government should regulate guns? Um, yeah, I do. Oh, uh, why? I think that if uh, lethal weapons get into the hands of wrong people, it's definitely a, a dangerous thing. But, um, you know, if your mental health checks out and uh, you, have, you have a permit to use them, like, recreationally at, like, a, a range, you know, I, that's okay. But uh, having them, like, just being able to carry them out in public, it doesn't sit well with me. Because you could, you know, somebody could be walking down the street and have a gun at any point in time. It's kind of, it's a little unsettling. Absolutely. Absolutely. Why do you think so? Because we just look at the news. We have too many shootings. We're the only country in the world who slays each other. They to be taken care of. The, I'm, I'm Alan Hirsch, I'm about the private market, and this is my resistance news, and the number one of the action item on how to resist is there's a, on, on um, December 14th, at San, the Sandy Hook Remembrance Day, vigil at the state capitol at 5.30. So gun control is important, we need to have a rational gun control, because basically uh, we... <sighs> If everybody has a gun, then nobody's safe. You, you lose your freedom of speech. If you're afraid your neighbor has a gun, you can't. You don't know how they're going to react. You don't know how they're going to react if the neighbor's had a bad day. So it really, really impinges the First Amendment rights if, if everybody has guns, because you're, you're, everyone's afraid of one another. Well, it seems like all uh, the people in all the adults, at least, had a pretty similar opinion. They all talked a lot about how like there's a lot of mass shootings and how they don't want to ban guns but they want more regulations on guns. Do you have any opinions on what they said? Uh, well, so I saw a lot of uniformity also. But uh, there were a bunch of factors that we saw similar. Uh, there was a lot of people who were not really sure of what the current process to get guns are. Uh, they were kind of confused about whether mentally ill people can get guns, which is, it's, it's they can't. Um, and there was a pretty much a uniformity against guns, but there are kind of contradictions. Like, if you if you don't have mental illness, you can have guns. But then that same guy, he went on to say, but I don't want to see everybody having guns in the streets. Um, and then there's that perspective, which I've never heard before, which is that the Second Amendment, uh, uh, is a danger to the First Amendment, which is that people owning guns is uh, uh, paid to the First Amendment, which I've never heard before. It's interesting. Yeah, I think, again, I saw a lot of pretty uniform ideas um, in terms of what regulations they believe should be in place for an individual to be able to own a firearm. Yeah, I think it's really interesting because, I mean, I personally don't know a lot about what it takes to get a gun, but I know there is a lot of steps that you have to go through uh, to get a gun currently. So I think it's interesting that it seems like the people talking didn't seem to, or 
they said that they wanted regulations, but it seems like those regulations are, for the most part, already in place. Um, yeah, I, I definitely think that a lot of people brought up regulations, but I guess the counterpoint to that, right, would be like, if these regulations and if the status quo is enough, um, why do we keep on hearing such awful news um, come up in our news stream every day? And so I think that's a point that is pretty valid or should be brought to the table as well. But I think a big deal of why we see so much in our news feed on cable news is um, at the same time that we've seen gun violence, homicide rates shoot down, we're at the safest point in history, um, we've seen a lot of mass shootings come up. So I think to clump it all into one issue of gun violence is kind of dangerous because there's this crazy um, trend of people going out and shooting up schools, churches, synagogues, um, which is not in line with the overall numbers where it comes to gun violence. Uh, do you think that the solution to that would be to put more strict gun laws? Um, personally, no, because um, when we're talking about gun laws, a lot of it is assault rifle bans. Uh, the assault rifle is a made-up term. It means nothing. Part of the definition for an assault rifle is that it's black. Um, so if you want to go, say, let's ban AR-15s. Um, first of all, that would be against the Second Amendment because uh, a well-regulated militia, that's where people usually uh, argue about. But what's the definition of an arm in the Second Amendment? Uh, the courts have told us over and over again that it's uh, something that's in common use for lawful purposes. The AR-15 is the most uh, popular rifle in America, and it's, uh, it's rarely used in crimes. You know, fists and knives are more, uh, more commonly used to kill than any type of rifle. So I think there's a lot of hysteria, but if you even want to start banning guns, uh, work on the Second Amendment first. Let's repeal that if you want to do anything. I would argue that it's not about banning guns as it is a matter of looking at screenings and looking at who is who and how people are able to get firearms with the potential to harm others. Well, already you have to have a gun permit. You have to have a hunting permit. Uh, in the majority of the states, you have to have a background check. Uh, there are different different types of background checks that people have to go through. Uh, but it doesn't do anything. You look at Chicago, which is a hellhole. Uh, it has some of the country's toughest gun laws. California has very tough gun laws, yet we recently saw the uh, shooting in Southern California. Um, so I think there's the idea that Criminals will follow laws. It just doesn't make sense. Uh, because even if you're going to make guns tougher to get, if you're going to make uh, higher capacity guns, uh, sorry, yeah, more powerful guns, harder to get, um, that criminals are not going to find illegal ways to get this. I mean, uh, heroin is illegal, but there are still people who have their hands on it. Um, and so when you're stopping, when you're making it illegal to get those guns, you're not just making it illegal for the criminals who will find ways to get their hands on it, but you're making it illegal for the people who want to defend their families, who want to defend their property uh, lawfully. I think against that, though, I think that the point is that under the status quo, right, like what we're experiencing today and like what we see today and the amount of fear that is sparked in like student and school communities because of potential threats, I think that I think that that is a huge problem when um, firearms are coming in conflict and are interfering with the way that people live and how safe they feel um, when they go to public spaces or public events, whether it be a concert or to school every day. I think that that is something that absolutely needs to be addressed, even if that doesn't mean banning firearms. I don't think that is a possibility, and I do think that that never ends well. It just opens up unsafe ways to gain the materials. But I think that if we don't do anything and if we let it be, I don't see a possible solution kind of coming up that is any better than what we currently see today. For sure, I think there's a lot of fear, but I think there's the problem of a lot of it being unfounded, mostly because of lots of media attention for these huge events, which didn't happen in the past, the big shooting, mass shootings. However, everybody's safer right now. You're less likely to sh die of done death than you did in the 80s, for example. Um, but you're talking about screenings. What would you propose? I would say, I just like, I know that to get a concealed carry, um, to get a concealed carry permit, there is not 
a significant amount of steps that someone needs to go through. It's like you hit a piece of white paper this many times and it doesn't matter if you miss. And so I think if that is the status quo, something needs to change because I think if people want to own firearms, there needs to be a safe method to do so. And I don't think whether it be screening for someone's mental health and how that is affecting them, I think that there are so many different factors that absolutely need to be a taken into account when you're dealing with an item that can and has ended people's lives, um, people's lives, and that affects someone in so many different ways. And I think as a society, we've become numb to these events in a way because they happen so frequently and they happen so often in every aspect of our lives today. And I think that's something we have to address. And I know a lot of people bring up that there's a lot of other countries that have very strict gun uh, restrictions and that they have very, very low gun um, violence in those countries. Do you think that would ever work in the United States? Um, no, for multiple reasons. Um, let's take the Second Amendment, first of all. None of those countries has a charter that has a Second Amendment in it, which ensures their public to the right to bear arms. Uh, and then Australia has lower gun deaths than ours. But when you look at the trend lines, our line has been going lower and lower. And since Australia has had that mass, uh, this is an example that everybody likes to use, the mass buyback of guns from the Australian public, their rate has actually been slowly, slowly increasing. So I don't think that we can just look at today's numbers. I mean, there are examples of us for how to deal with mental health in other countries, um, how to deal with broken communities that other countries are doing better at. Um, but I don't think that you could copy other people's uh, ways of dealing with gun violence just because, mostly because of the Second Amendment. Yeah, I definitely think that it would be difficult to implement a plan like that, saying no guns at all, like other countries in the world have done. I think that that's pretty difficult to do in this current state that we have now. Um, and I'm not sure how you would even begin that process, but I think that there's things that we can do moving forward as a society to make sure that everyone feels safe. I know there's a huge divide between the people who want much stricter gun laws or having guns banned together and the people that feel that they want their gun laws protected. So do you think in the future there could be any change into what the current state is, or is it just going to be a feud that keeps on going and no change will happen? Well, I think a feud is, uh, it's healthy, uh, uh, not in the way that we're doing it right now because of how mean we've gotten, how divisive we've gotten, but it's healthy to flesh out our issues in public. Um, there's the originalist view of the Second Amendment, and there's people who are legitimately scared for their lives. Um, maybe without due cause, but um, I think it's just, especially in urban areas like Sacramento, like Davis, we don't really see the need for guns. Uh, I don't know anybody who owns guns that I've met in Sacramento, for example. Um, but that doesn't represent the entire country. There are, pe there are cities farther out, there are towns, uh, rural areas, uh, even impoverished neighborhoods where you feel like you need to protect yourself. Um, and so, in our relative safeness, which is uh, nationwide, we're thankfully seeing a lot of safeness. We're forgetting that there are people who need to defend themselves. Mm -hmm. um, and gun ownership is it? It's not just a violent thing. It's owning an AR-15 does not mean you're going to have to use it. Mm -hmm. It's something that makes you, first of all, feel safe and scares away someone who's going to harm your family. So. Uh, I remember I was interviewing this guy the other day, and he told me um, when crack cocaine hit Compton, this guy, he, he put out a gun uh, in front of his house, and he said, there will be no crack on this block. Um, and so there's that passive use of guns to uh, prevent stuff from happening to you, to your community, to your family. Well, thanks so much for being on the show. It was a really interesting uh, topic to see both sides, like when you're talking about how the Second Amendment is a big part of how it would be hard to have gun, stricter gun laws and about how 
guns can be make some people feel safe and like detract from crime and then also on the other side that uh, there's so much gun violence in the country that we should do something about it and I think it's something that's going to continue pl to play out till the end of time. I don't think, obviously, I don't think there will be a, a nice yeah. uh, end point to it, um, but I think it'll be really interesting to see how this discussion uh, continues in the United States. So tune back next time. Mm -hmm.